Hello everyone, I thought I'd share how the basic setup works for DinoFracture. It's an amazing tool and here are some tips on how to do the initial setup. But before we start I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So I wanted to show what we're actually doing here. So right here I have a tree. And as you can see this tree is a, you know, Cinti prefab and it's on the floor. Now, if you have trees that are going to collide with the floor, for example, there are some settings you will need to change. This is a really basic fracture on click. You have the option to do fracture on collision as well, which I'm pretty sure is what you'll end up using. And you have the setup. Now, this is a pretty basic setup, nothing all too exciting. Then in this one, we have a really high mass because this is a stone wall and the pieces you know shouldn't be light and we have a slightly more advanced setup so a couple of more pieces then we have this piece here which has increased all of that now all of this is running runtime meaning this these two will be completely fine when it comes to performance won't really cause any issues this is already going to have some performance impact, which is why I've also created the exact same setup, but then pre-factured. So let's have a look at how this actually plays. So this is the basic, and as you can see, you know, the rigid body is really low, and yeah, it collapses like this. This one, you know, has a couple of points, but not too many. And it already looks great, but you know, as you can see, there's not that too many pieces. Now this one is a lot more advanced, and as you can see, you already have stutter as performance drops. And then when we go to this one, we have the exact same setup, but it's pre-fractured. So the same amount of pieces, and as you can see, there's no weird performance dips because I pre-fractured this entire piece. Let's set this up. Now the first thing I want to address is integration. Is there game creator integration? No, because there's no need for integration. So this works with on click, on collision, and that's a general Unity thing that has nothing to do with game creator or any system for that matter. So there is no integration because there doesn't need to be any integration. I want it to be absolutely clear from the start. So now that that's out of the way, let's set up the first basic thing. So I'm gonna grab the same objects and yeah, this is my tree prefab. There we go. Now it already has a collider, which is great, and it will need a collider. So if you have a mesh without a collider, just add a collider. It needs to have one. So, you know, just to be, uh, just to be absolutely clear about that. Then next up, we're going to add a rigid body. And if you haven't used rigid bodies a lot, um, my knowledge about this is already quite limited. I'm going to be honest. But one of the first things we need to address is mass. The lower the mass, the lighter the object is. Now, this is a tree and it's not going to be light. So I'm gonna choose 100 and you can increase this, play around with it. And collision detection is something I do want to set to continuous dynamic, but we can use discrete as well. And we'll have a look at how it impacts performance. Constraints is something I'll cover in a bit. Those are quite important actually. Now let's start adding some scripts. So you have three, two options for scripts. You have runtime fractured geometry and you have pre-factured geometry. And the name says it all. This happens in runtime. This is pre-factured. Pre-fractured means it, you know, the fracturing is done beforehand and this will be better for performance. So let's remove this one. I'm going to do runtime for this as there's no need to pre-fracture such a simple object. 
And another interesting thing here is distribute mass. And this is really cool actually. It's how much mass will each piece have? And if the total is 100, each piece, the smaller it is, will get lower. And that's actually quite realistic. So we're definitely going to use that. Then the inside material is the material you will see once it cracks open. So another quite important thing here, and you need to find something that, you know, matches. So I'm going to go with wood and, you know, I'm sure there will be better options, but this kind of matches. So I'm okay with that. Then fracture template, another quite important thing here. So we're going to go to dino fracture and i think it's demo prefabs and then we have a couple of options you can create your own but you know i'm just going to use the, the defaults here so let's drag one in so i'm going to use the localized beam fracture piece here and the reason i'm using this one is because this will act like the beam in the demo scene and yeah it's a uh, quite a good fit then we have uh, pieces parent, which is going to be used if you are going to use the, you know, if you check the demo scene, you have the option to glue pieces so that you can only fracture the middle of a window, for example, and that the outside will be glued. That, where, that's where this comes in handy. And if you want to know how to do that, honestly, just, you know, check the demo scene for that. It's quite specific. And everything else, we're actually going to leave exactly the same. We're just going to expand the radius just, just a tiny bit and yeah we'll leave everything else as is now you will need one more thing and that is you know the fracture collision type so i'm going to use on click here because in the scene i don't really have anything else set up but if you have a scene set up with say the bow for example you can use um, fracture on collision and you can increase the threshold as well so the force threshold is basically, you know, how much force will it take before it starts fracturing? And that is honestly really important because if this remains zero, well, I'll just show what happens if this remains zero. Well, it already collapses by default because the bottom isn't flat and you know, that, that's it. That's how, you know, vulnerable it is. If you increase this force, so let's do 20. You will see that it doesn't collapse and walking into it won't make it collapse either. So yeah, quite, uh, quite important. So that's definitely something you'll need to play around with. If you charge the bow fully, then, you know, you can actually shatter this piece with a uh, you know with this threshold and this is going to be an important gameplay mechanic Because you want to make sure that not everything is able to just you know shatter everything obviously So this will be quite important to mess around with Now because this is a you know a relatively empty scene and I don't really have anything set up I'm just going to use uh, Fracture on click because it's easier to demonstrate, but you know, I've shown how this works. That's really all there is to it so let's remove that component and we're going to do on click. And yeah, the important thing here is, you know, where do you click and that's where it collapses. And that looks really cool. You could say, you know, you could use this for, you know, wood cutting, for example, to actually make it quite dynamic. Um, which is actually pretty pretty awesome. It's you know better than to just have two meshes um, It looks a lot cooler as you can see there's a lot of little pieces and honestly it just looks amazing. So That's really simple now. What if this tree actually needs to be in the terrain and that's where we'll have a slight issue so it needs to be in the terrain, but You know because it's a tree. It's not gonna stick out like that but because it has a rigid body, this will, this is what's going to happen. It's just, you know, going to, well, go back up basically. So it's, uh, it's not going to act like you want it to. And especially with terrain, because this is just a, you know, mesh collider. This is not a terrain. 
and you know with the terrain it will you will have some weird things happen so we have the options for constraints and I'm going to show what happens when we turn them all on the tree will actually stick in the ground like it's supposed to now when I fracture it it will fracture naturally still and that's definitely going to be a really important thing for the rigid body especially for things like trees even stones walls etc is that there's a big chance that they will actually you know be in the ground or slightly in your terrain so that's where the constraints come into play now that was a quite an easy example and as you can see this will have no performance impact whatsoever it's a really simple fracture but at the same time it's already a lot better than you'd most likely do with something like a you know a slicer or just having separate meshes yourself so already really cool but still a bit basic now the next piece I'm going to take is going to be a castle wall there we go and I'm going to pick the, the first one I'm not really sure if there's much of a difference really so there we have it so this is the castle wall now just like last time this already has a collider which is again really important and we're going to add a rigid body to it as well and the mass here I'm going to increase that by a lot it's this is stone this is not wood so it's going to be you know slightly uh, slightly heavier especially you know you have to keep in consideration that once it collapses or it becomes separate pieces that every piece will have a distributed mass if you leave that on if you don't leave it on I, I mean I would leave it on honestly because that's actually a really great feature and I definitely recommend that so if the mass is too low then every piece will become incredibly light and maybe a thousand might be a bit much but at the same time this is stone this is not some you know splinter of wood so it will need to have some mass per piece so next up what we're going to add is going to be really similar to the last time so we're going to do the runtime geometry and I'm going to you know again look up some stone material this looks nice it's not going to match the color exactly so obviously if you want to do this well you know create some new materials where the colors actually properly match so for this template I'm actually going to pick glass and the reason for that is because it, you know, it will actually look really good. It's, uh, you know, this is not a beam and glass actually fits really well. So where are those prefabs? There we go. So I'm going to do gloss fracture piece as this is, you know, in my opinion, the best match for something like stone when it comes to the, the actual behavior. So I'm going to throw that in here. I'm again going to leave this empty but if you know imagine if you'd have this you know this stone wall with a slightly different texture indicating you could crack this then have walls next to it and you know you could make those pieces the glue if you want so again I'd recommend just checking the demo scene for specific cases like that as it's uh, you know literally in the demo scene so here I'm uh, I'm going to keep things really similar I'm uh, going to change this around and you'll see the impact of this and again I'm just going to do um, fracture on click here to quickly demonstrate this and the number of you know iterations is a lot smaller and as you can see this is where it ends so performance wise this is great you know it will work wonders for performance and as you can see every piece is still quite heavy you know the small the smaller piece is already quite light so maybe even a thousand was not enough and this is one of those reasons why you could look at you know different rigid body settings so for example instead of using discrete use you know continuous dynamic or speculative so if we try that again and the results will not be all that different I want to be absolutely clear about that 
but it will it will at least behave differently and you know it won't just blow them blow them away like it did last time and as i say that it actually happens but yeah as you can see the mass is way too low for a stone piece so even that 1000 just honestly wasn't enough so anyway that's where we have the wall so really basic not all that exciting and what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to duplicate this one there we go and this time around i'm just going to um you know increase the number of pieces I'm going to increase the number of iterations and generations as well. And the result we're getting is so much better, but obviously, you know, this will have a performance impact. But it's so cool. <laughs> I have to be honest. But as you can see, you know, this will have an impact. And, you know, if you have an object of force, scatter this, it will literally blow into so many smaller pieces. It's a. Uh, it's honestly it's amazing it's super cool but yeah obviously this will have a performance impact so you know that's something to you know to keep in mind so the alternative to that is you know pre-fracturing this so i'm going to drag it here just going to call this um, fractured and let's add um, Prefactured geometry, and I'm going to keep every setting exactly the same, but we're going to prefracture this. So let's drag all of this in, and we're going to do 2, 20, and there we go. And yeah, let's create fractures, um, clear folder, and save. So this is where is it going to save these meshes because it will already generate these meshes. So we're going to do clear folder and I have something um, somewhere here or is it prefecture? Let's do, there we go, select folder and this will generate the, well, the pieces. Now, depending on how much you do, this might take a while. Sometimes I have noticed that you know it is a relatively new asset and this prefactoring can sometimes be a tiny bit glitchy when it comes to the output so I would definitely recommend um, you know if you're going to do it again deleting the object giving it a different name and doing it again so that is something I have noticed so just something to keep in mind now as you can see this really did not take a lot of time but before we go back in, let's make sure we actually remove the runtime version. Not have two scripts at once. There we go. And yeah, you know, it's uh, it's the same really cool, really specific effect, but with a lot better performance. And you you can see that for yourself when you turn on um, you know turn on the stats and. This might not be incredibly accurate, but it will give a good indication. And keep in mind that even though prefacturing will do wonders for performance, you know, it, it still, you know, can be heavy if you increase it too much. So definitely something to do, you know, to keep in mind. So the more complex it will get, the more, you know, advanced destruction will be. And that makes sense as well, because, you know, when you really think about the majority of triple a games that have amazing destruction it's not that many and there's a reason for that it will have performance impact so having destruction like this piece for example is definitely something that even though it's with mouse click it's not that as impressive it is actually really cool when you do it on collision and will make enough breaks so i definitely recommend keeping it low especially in the beginning as it will generate impressive results with on collision especially with some force behind it so try keeping it low at first and if you're really not impressed then you can go for high numbers but generally speaking i would leave high numbers you know for things like i don't know cutscenes where you just you know explode an entire tower or building or something like that but yeah otherwise i definitely wouldn't go with incredibly high numbers just for random objects it's it's just not worth it and with on collision this will you know have a way more 
impressive uh, result anyway so I definitely try to keep it low but if you are going for an impressive cutscene or you know just think I'm only targeting high-end PCs then yeah definitely play around but you know I'd recommend at least prefacturing those bigger pieces so that's it for this video I uh, you know I hope you enjoyed this thought it would be useful just to show the basics and there's so much more I haven't even touched upon simply because I haven't had the time to try it all it's a it's a really cool asset and I think you know it will have a lot of benefit for a lot of games where you know at least some type of destruction can be necessary but if you're thinking like you know a lot of destruction is not necessary for me then even things like this where you you know crack the object for um, you know wood cutting or something like that it's actually already really cool so definitely worth checking out I'll put the link in the description and uh, that's it so hope you enjoyed this if you did please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time